for, who, who are my uh, main influences uh, for, for trumpet, as far as technique and sound and uh, other things? So, um, I'm a, a big supporter of uh, transcribing. I, I grew up in uh, Israel, in Tel Aviv. I had some, uh, some wow, well, some teachers who taught me about harmony and about uh, the um, theoretical elements of the music but really when it comes to jazz there's no uh, any book out there that can teach you about swinging and um, I think if you grew up in New York for example my drummer Nashit Waits he's the drummer of the great Freddie Waits who was an amazing drummer and um, growing up he was you know sitting on the lap of uh, Max Roach and, and being part of that lineage and that tradition and getting it first hand uh, and you get a sense of what what this music is about what is uh, what is the story is about and uh, I think what jazz is about and swing um, today the word jazz is complicated some people go against it and uh, I can understand why it used to be a term for uh, wh whoever is against that term talking about the fact that it used to be a white man term um, to uh, signify a uh, certain music uh, for me I, I you know I'm a white boy from Tel Aviv um, all, all I knew is that I uh, grew up and um, I uh, I fell in love with that music my father was um, a music uh, fan both classical and jazz and uh, at the house he played Frank Sinatra and uh, Louis Armstrong and Ella Fitzgerald a lot of Cole Porter and um, and I kind of fell in love with, my, with that music and I, I played since a very young age, since I was eight or... Uh, by the age of ten I, I played already in two big bands playing uh, some of the tunes I played tonight, even Shiny Stockings and Cute, a lot of Neil, Neil Hefty, uh, Count Basie, Fat Jones, a lot of those arrangements and um, so that's not an obvious thing for a kid in Tel Aviv uh, but then to go on and uh, keep learning about this music uh, I had to do it through tapes. I didn't have one teacher or one person that I could see firsthand and understand about this music. Uh, everyone knows what I, when I say transcribing music, what it means. Um, so basically that means you take, uh, you listen to the tapes. I say tapes because back then when I was like in high school, I was still with a uh, Walkman and that was before CDs. So you listen to the, um, to the music and you learn it exactly. You listen to one phrase and you're trying to understand which notes they're playing and you stop and you rewind, play it again and you stop and you rewind, play it again till you, you know what notes it is. And then you, you learn it and you play it over and over but then you go even more specific and try to swing it in the same exact way. So for me, not living, uh, not growing up in the States and not growing up in the uh, in uh, New York, uh, that was the only way to learn about uh, this music. So, um, uh, just to give you an example of like, uh, for example, the first uh, Miles Davis solo I transcribed. I can give you like hundred example of, you know, Clifford Brown, Don Cherry, Clark Terry, Chet Baker, um, uh, many. It's it's kind of endless. And and once uh, you're done with the uh, trumpet players, uh, I moved on to uh, saxophone players and tried to learn uh, the history and the tradition of you know, Colin Hawkins, uh, Dexter Gordon, Charlie Parker. Um, and then uh, trying to get everything I could into my fingers uh, and uh, basically learn how to swing and how to uh, how this music goes about and uh, once learning from tape is not enough so then you started playing with friends and started playing once you move to the stage you do session all the time and you play and you play and you play till you um, figure out a little bit you know bits by pieces um, to yourself what it, what it is 
And uh, the beautiful thing is that this is an um, ongoing journey and that never ends and uh, discovering more about music and how uh, you can co uh, compose different tunes uh, and uh, the, the treatment of composition, how uh, sometimes you just want a song that can be um, a nice layer for improvisation or sometimes it's not about improvisation, it's only about the song. There's many ways to go about, about that as well. But uh, like I said, it's an ongoing um, journey uh, to answer, uh, answer specifically about your question. Like the, the people I mentioned, um, of course, Miles Davis, but Lizzie, Clark Terry, uh, Chad, Dad, Katie, Lee Morgan, um, Art Farmer, Booker Little, all of those trumpet players are people I uh, admire and uh, study and uh, tried for years to imitate and sound like that so I can get the, the, the tradition out of my fingers and then be able to uh, to have it so I can forget it and try to uh, concentrate on, on the, what I'm doing. You, all the way there in the... Wait for it. <laughs> Not yet. Hi, uh, I'm also a trumpet player, and so I'm interested in. Uh, so you just mentioned your process in transcribing, and I'm doing a lot of that right now because I'm I'm trying to study. But now that you're on the road and you play a lot, how do you practice in the day? How do you decide um, where to spend your time in, in terms of you know? There's composing. There's also keeping up. Just playing trumpet and they're studying new stuff so how do you balance your day how do you balance your practicing okay so she asked me basically about balance in life how do you combine all the elements uh, that they uh, require to have to uh, have this lifestyle and it's kind of funny because it's the second time today this earlier this afternoon I did a little un uh, radio interview and she asked me the same exact question how do you uh, balance and I think balance um, is an important word, an important element uh, for me in my life, regardless of music. Um, I am, a, for example, I'm a family man. I have two kids and my, my wife and uh, life trying to maintain. At the same time, you are out on the road uh, half, half the year almost. Um, what's the right balance? Obviously, there's no one answer. Um, there's certain periods you, you decide to, to work more, there's certain periods where you decide uh, to spend more time with the family and uh, doing that doesn't necessarily hurt the music, on the contrary it can enhance, um, you know, the, this music is so personal and uh, so, um, so sensitive that um, it's important to uh, make sure you live your life too, you know, it's not about how much I practice or it's not about uh, if I spend eight hours in the practice room or five hours or one hour on, or uh, half an hour. So, um, so uh, I think that in general it changes between periods. Now, for example, I'm in a period where if I'm touring, uh, I don't practice too much through the day. Uh, I, I could spend other things that has to do with my uh, musical life, for example, writing or going over sketches that I already wrote and um, and uh, I'm in the process of uh, composing my next album, which I'm actually recording in, uh, in 10 days. And uh, I'm very excited about it. It's a whole new project, a whole new band. And uh, I have the general sketches that I'm sitting with and listening to for about uh, four months. But the next week is going to be what, uh, what's going to define the album. I'm going to sit with it for the next week. Um, uh, everything else is off the calendar and uh, see how it's gonna come together and um, I'm excited towards that but every every period is different sometimes you can practice five hours a day sometimes you don't need to and uh, I think also with practicing it's not about how many hours but it's really uh, how much uh, attention you put into it and, and uh, and you really have to be smart about the practicing and whoever teacher tells you you should do this and this and this, you really have to think and see really what am I doing this and why, why, why am I doing this for? And maybe I can do it in a different way that's going to benefit me more. 
maybe I'm gonna do it in a different way that is just gonna be more joyful for me, which is uh, not not a joke. It's a, a very important element. I have a kid that is playing now piano, and I always think about how to push it without pushing it. I don't wanna make her play. I don't wanna force it. I want it to come from her. Still, kids are kids, you know. So, uh, uh, like we started, you know, balance is the I think the main answer, and um, and and I think being attentive to where you are and what you need. You, you can ask me, and I'll, I'll repeat it. Um, this gentleman asked me about the village Vanguard. How did I feel playing there, and um, and uh, how was that experience? So, um, first of all, yeah, I'm, I'm uh, feeling very honored that I got to even uh, play there. Uh, before I remember specifically the feeling before the first time I played, I was nervous and I was uh, excited, and I couldn't believe I'm gonna play in, in that club that play for those walls who heard everyone, all my idols, you know, the people that I grew up listening to and studying almost every note they played, and some of those notes were played in the Village Vanguard. So, um, and first of all, I, I was hanging there a lot and I met all the crew and I, I got to uh, hang with Lorraine Gordon, uh, who was still running the club, and uh, I had dinner with her and I sat a lot and really, and I also read her book, uh, which is very nice and uh, just learning even from closer what is this place all about and uh, of course I knew for myself as well but um, I think by now when I play there it's, it's uh, I'm going back to focus on my own uh, needs and what I need, I'm trying to convey when I play my music but still um, the first time I played there was, uh, was a thrill and joy and, and uh, a lot of excitement. I remember uh, uh, there is a certain feeling in that room that you just cannot deny. You know, even if you try, it's just a special uh, place that belongs to history and I'm glad it stayed the same. They never renovated, they never changed. People are not eating. You know, here in OC and in Europe, it's common. You go to the club, you hear music. Sometimes in other places, uh, in the clubs and just out of uh, necessity, they sell food because they need to make a living and uh, people are eating when you play which is a weird, weird feeling so when they're in the you sit and listen and it's, it's a good feeling <laughs>